Hello, hello everyone. How y'all doing? Uh, yeah, once again, please tell me if the quality is okay. I think it should be fine. But yeah, because I haven't changed anything, but yeah. If anything goes wrong, just tell me. Uh, this will very likely be uploaded on YouTube in a couple of days, yeah. Mm. So, today we are going to do today's Code Forces round, 765 Division 2. Um, it ended half an hour ago. So I am going to just do a virtual participation in this round. Mm. And I will not do it too competitively. I think I will try to discuss solutions on the fly like i will probably try something like solving a and then kind of explaining a at least uh somewhat like i i don't know how like yeah just explain it whatever and then go for b and so on so i will not try to win the round i will discuss the problems on the fly but I will still do it as a virtual participation and we'll see how it goes. So yeah, let's put start time at 1740. Yeah, sure, why not? Uh, am I planning to do streams more frequently now? Probably, at least I, I'm pretty sure I will stream five um, Snark Newswinter series rounds. The first one was yesterday. And yeah, I, I guess in, in the meantime, I might do streams of Code Fortress rounds and so on. Um, What's my opinion about how long you should be stuck before reading the tutorial? I mean, it's just... <laughs> First of all, you can find a lot of information on CodeForce and... Um, I would say that it's very individual and depends on the problem, on you, and how you train. Like, there's no universal answer to this. So, yeah. I guess if I figure out like something and if I want to share my opinion, which I believe is right, I will do that. But for now, that's it. Why you don't use Linux? Well, hard to say why. I'm used to using Windows and it suits my needs. Contest statements are bad and long. I wonder if, like, they are bad because they are long? Is that what you mean? Just because it's not generally the case that long statements are bad. It depends. It's not Turbo C++, it's Farm Manager, as a lot of people replied already. Which is basically just a console um, application that allows editing files, like it has a built-in editor and a console line. E1 and E2, I think I'll just 
keep it E and then I'll just mark it solved after E2. It's okay, I think. I do not use well green. Uh, do I sometimes feel that code force problem statements are a bit too bad? Often have an unrelated backstory. No, I don't think so. Like I don't think in general there's anything too bad about code force problem statements. I think like I cannot say they are often bad. Like sometimes they do have some I don't know. Um, bad things. Hard to say. I, I don't think there is anything like globally bad about code forces or whatever problem statements. Okay, we are starting in 30 seconds. As I said, I guess we will start with A, so we can just create the file. And let's go. So. Um, okay. Problem A. So I just explode the remained. Okay, alphabet of two letters, each word exactly L letters long. Each word is an integer, okay. Okay. Distance between two words, number of positions where they differ, okay. The word has n forms described by integers xi. Closeness of y is sum of distances. Okay, I need to find the word which is as close to this as possible. So let's yeah, the, the idea is probably that we can actually just uh, solve it for each bit individually, right? Like we have to find the word which is as close as possible. Okay, so uh, how? what is the best way? Uh, let's say we have a vector of, okay, two dimensional array, length times two, which is the count of each bit. Mm, we read words by one, one by one. And for each word we read, for each bit, uh, the j's bit, the j's lowest bit is x shifted by j and 1 and count of. In j's position, we have bit one more like number which has this bit. And we want answer which is if there are multiple ways, restore any, okay. Uh, for each bit, uh, if one bit is more frequent, then we add this bit to y and print y. This should be good. Uh, okay, it matches the example output. Let us submit. Happy New Year, okay. Uh, okay, let's see what I can do about explaining this problem, even though it's kind of easy, but anyway, uh, let's test something. What do I test? Okay. Hmm. Yeah, it doesn't work for me. Let's see.
What is F? Is my stream broken? Don't think so. You can also count the ice bit which are set. Okay, problem A solved, and I forgot to turn on the timer, even though I wanted to. Okay, it will be late by several minutes. Uh, I guess I should make it more customizable, but yeah, the timer will be just late by four minutes. That's fine. Okay, four minutes. Um, okay, let's try again. Come on. Used to be better. Okay. Okay, this should be good. So, yeah, what do we have in this problem? We have some numbers like one zero zero one zero zero one 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 zero one zero, for example. Okay, so this is x one, this is x two, and this is x three. So, and we want to find a word y, uh, which could be, for example, I don't know, one zero zero one zero, and we want to minimize the total distance from y to xi for each i from one to n, right? And the question is, how do we find the word y which minimizes this this, this sum of distances, right? And the distance is the number of bits where the numbers differ. So since we want to uh, minimize this, what like let's uh, let's say reorder. Like the, the distance is different. Like for each individual bit, the distance distance is summed up from individual bits. Okay, I guess I I should uh, level up my explanation. But anyway, so this is actually equal to from 1 to n, from 0 to L minus 1. Uh, okay, let's say difference could be just, difference between bits could be just their absolute, the absolute value of their difference. If they're equal, it will be 0. If there are dis different, like 0 and 1, distance will be 1. So is, this is just modulo of yj minus xij, right? This is the same value. We have just written down like the definition of D is the total over individual bits. And now what we can do and what we should do is we can actually change these sums, the order they are in. And so we will just have sum from 0 to L minus 1. I know about colors, but let's just use some colors. Uh, sum from 1 to N yj minus xij and this is what we want to minimize and we can see that this is just individual like uh, this is we have l individual things that don't depend on each other we it, they only depend on y, yj yj right this is the only value we can control and each of those l sums are independent so we want to minimize this and it means we just want to choose every bit so that the total is minimized. And what it means is that we just have to solve the problem for each bit individually. And now how do we do that? Well, it's easy to see that we should just choose the bit which is more frequent in this column. So here we will have 1, 0, 1, we have 1. Here we have 0, 1, 1, so we should have actually 1. Here we should have 0. Here we should have 1. And here we should have 0. And that will be our optimal y. So that's kind of the problem. And my code basically does, what does it do? We are just, uh, for each number, we want to find each bit. We want to count in each position how often each bit uh, is encountered. And then for each bit, we just, if ones are more frequent than zeros, then we want to set the ice bit in our answer and we want just to print it. Okay. 
Um, that's it for problem A. It took me a bit too long, but I have explained. Let's see problem B. And yeah. And elementary particles, the eyes of them has type AI, a subsegment from L to R. Okay, R. Mm. The subsegments can be equal as sequences, but still considered different. Sure. We want to get two different subsegments of the same length, denote this length K. Okay, so I want to find two subsegments, different subsegments, uh, which have at least one value equal in the same position. That's it. Okay. Uh, Well, I don't think there's anything bad, like, so long. Like, does it take you too long to read? Then you should improve your reading skills. Like, I don't think this problem has any, like, too many unnecessary details. And also, like, as you can see, when I read the problem, I kind of find the important parts. I guess you can do that with experience, but in general, like, uh, it's not too hard to figure out what the problem is asking. Like, the first paragraph is definitely not important, but you can also kind of see immediately that it's not, so you can basically skip it. And then starting from there, I don't think the statement is too bad. So about the solution of the problem, uh, basically we need at least one pair of equal values. And it means that, okay, let's just call it first, and then we'll see what's, what's going on. We have multiple test cases. Uh, so, uh, the values are up to 150. Yeah, I guess just whatever. Like the idea is that we, sh we want the length of the segment to be as high as possible. So we will initialize the answer by minus one and then we will just print answer and now um, I think we should just find two closest. Yeah, let's just use map because I'm a bit lazy, but you can use an array, which is fine too. Uh, yeah, I guess it's just max of answer and n minus i minus. Yeah, probably. Let's see what go. Uh, okay, cannot compile. Thank you. It is second. Probably correct. Okay, let's submit. Happy New Year. Okay, cool. So what this problem was about. Yeah, we, you, you can see a picture, right? So you want to find two subsegments which have an equal value at the same position. And basically the idea is uh, we should just uh, pick a pair of elements 
which will be on the same position in our subsegments. And then we will uh, try to find subsegments which contain these elements and actually have as big lengths as possible. Uh, okay, let's see, for example. Okay, I guess I can do, use this setup. A bit fancy, right? Not really. Uh, let's use blue because blue is good. So as you can see for in the example, three, one, five, two, one, three, four. Like the idea is that we want ones to be on the same positions. So we take a one here, for example, and we want to take one here. Like we, that's not necessary, but let's say that like we need to have two different equal values in the array that will match when we put subsegments one above the other. So let's fix some pair of such equal values. Let's say this element is I and this element is J where let's say one less than j not greater than n. like this is the indices of equal elements and ai is equal to aj and then what could be the longest subsegments which contain this pair for example we can just take subsegments of length one uh yeah okay let's just repeat it here So once again, we have ones here. We want to, them, to make them equal. We can, for example, take segments of length one. Of course, we can just take one and one and match them. But can we make our subsegments longer? Yes, of course we can. For example, we can start them one position earlier, right? Yeah, for sure. Now we have two subsegments of length two, which is fine for us. Uh, we can also move the right border as well, right? We can make them one longer like this, and we can even make them one more longer like this. So now we have two subsegments of length four as given in the picture on the left, which gives us like the answer, right? Um, and we can see that we cannot extend this segment in any direction. We cannot extend it to the left because we are bounded by the left bound of the array, and we cannot you extend it to the right either. So that's why like this is the best we can do, right? And in general, if you have two positions, I and J, and let's say I is to the left of J, the left boundary will be always given by I, like determined by I, right? Because like you move the left bound and then you get to the left end of the array and then the right bound will be determined by J. You move the right bound and it will be uh, bounded by the end of right end of the ray, right? Yeah, I should not probably try to use my hands, but that's fine. So the question is, let's say we have again I and J. What is the best length of subsegment we can have? Uh, we can have I minus one elements on the left right so it just means that this is i and we can extend our segment to the left by i minus one positions and then uh, we have one element uh, which is just ai also equal to aj this is our element and then we can also take some elements to the right and how many elements we can take. This is just n minus j elements on the right. Right? This is an iPad and yeah. So uh, what's the total? The total is just uh, i minus 1 plus 1 plus n minus j, which is equal to n minus j minus i. So n minus j minus i is the best we can do 
uh, the best lengths we can do if we fix two equal elements in positions i and j. Now remember that we want to maximize the answer. We want to um, maximize the length of our subsegment. And that actually means we want to minimize j minus i, the distance between j and i. And just that means that we have to find two elements that are equal and are as close in the array as possible. And how do I do that in my code? Uh, I just maintain a map which has the last position of each element. And then for each element, I try to take the last occurrence be before this occurrence. If it exists, then I update the answer with n minus the distance between these elements, which is i and the last occurrence of this element. And then I put that into map and I just print the answer. So for each element, I just take the closest element on the left, which is equal to it, and only update answer with these pairs. Uh, code forces is should be enough. It has a lot of problems. Now, is it possible to have any number in between the mix, min, and max positions? I'm not sure about like what this question is asking. Like, you can have any length of subsegment up to this answer. You can just shrink it on the left or on the right if you want. So, any length up to what we output is possible for sure. If an element occurs five times, you can you can take third and first occurrence. Yes, like you can take any two occurrences which are equal, and you want to find a pair actually which is as close as possible to each other. Okay, if there are no questions about problem B, let's move on to problem C. I did not take last and first one element. Like for each element, I took the previous element. Like uh, here, if uh, let's say I have something like this. So I go, I, I go one, one does nothing, two, two does nothing, one. I take the closest element on the left, which is just one. So I take this pair from one to one. 3, I do nothing, 1, I take this element and the last occurrence of the same element, which is 1. I take this, 4 does nothing, 1, I take this pair, 5 does nothing, 1, I take this pair. So I take all pairs that have no same elements in between. And uh, yeah, why well, don't need all pairs of same values? Because we want to minimize the distance between them. So it's enough to only uh, check consecutive pairs. You don't need any pairs. Mm, yeah, we can also use a vector. We can use a lot of other things. It's just one way to implement. Let's move on to problem C. Oh, it even has a picture. You can see the way from what's that name? I don't know. Okay, Paul's reversed. I guess why not? Yeah, in the meantime, everyone solved C and someone solved D. That's fine. Okay. 
Okay. We can remove no more than K signs. I want to minimize the time. Okay. So I guess just n cube works here. Let's see. Uh, we input n l k. Uh, we have n signs located at points d, uh, and we have speed limits like this. We cannot remove the sign at the start of the road, of course. So um, we want to minimize the time. Okay, I guess we will need some. We can actually have int, but it's okay. And we will have dynamic programming, which is an um, Mm -hmm. Let's make an additional sign at the end of the road, which will be at position L and uh, speed limit, whatever, doesn't matter. So our dp will be just n plus side n plus one and most k plus one infinity. So initially we are at position zero, zero and Time is zero. Now we go from one to n. We look over how many elements we remove. We have removed, right? And let's just look over the previous removed sign. The old j should be equal to j minus i minus p minus one. If all j is non-negative, then we update ij with i minus, well, p, all j, plus the distance is di minus dp, times the speed limit will be ap. And this is probably it. And I guess we can just print the mean element of the last row of our dp. Let's see. 47, 38, looks good to me. Um, yeah, like it will not actually overflow, but whatever. Um, what do you mean accepted? I only know Happy New Year, but it's accepted. Okay, what if I refresh? Yeah, it's Happy New Year, fine. <laughs> okay, what was this problem about? It was about removing some signs. We want to minimize some distance. Basically, this is kind of, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just a dynamic programming problem. Uh, so as you can see in the picture, we have n signs. We want to remove some of them. Uh, we just do dp which is okay let's see uh, so once again we have some signs d0 d1 d2 d3 so on let's say we have dn which is equal to the end of the road so we cannot remove the first sign we cannot remove this one we cannot remove this one but we can remove some some middle signs and you have some speed limits a0 a1 a2 a3 and so on. And 
Yeah, let's say we decide to remove sine d1 and then sine d3. It means that this speed limit doesn't matter now. This doesn't matter now. Okay, let's say that we don't have anything here. Um, so in this case, if we remove signs 1 and 3, our time will be just equal to d2 minus d0 times a0, which is the distance we have to move with speed a0 times the speed plus d, okay, d4 in this case, minus d2 times a2, right? So that's, for example, if we remove signs 1 and 3 and so on. So what we can do is what I do in my code. I do dp of ij. What does it mean? Uh, minimal time uh, to move up to sine i. Um, if sine i is not removed and j signs exactly j signs are removed in range from 1 to j minus 1 okay so again dpij is Minimal time to move up to sine i if sine i is not removed, but we remove j signs in between the start of our road and the i sign. And uh, we initialize with 0, 0, which is we are at sine 0 and we have removed 0 signs, which makes sense. And our time is 0 there. And then we go from 1 to n. We go from 0 to k, because k is the maximum number of signs we can remove. And P is the previous sign that was not removed. Like I loop over what was the previous sign that was not removed. And let's say this was sign P, which should be smaller than I. So from I minus one to zero, direction doesn't matter here. You can just go from zero to I minus one as well. Uh, all J is what will be the number of signs removed before sign P, because we want J signs, exactly J signs to be removed. And since P was the previous removed sign, we have I minus P minus one signs removed between them, right? This is the number of signs that are between them. I is our current not removed sign and P is the previous not removed sign. So all the signs in between will be removed. This is their number. And we just subtract it from the total number of removed signs. We check that we don't get out of bounds and we just update our dpij with uh, dp from p to all j is like the smallest time to get to sign p removing all the j signs and we also add the time we need to move from sign p to sign i which is the distance times the speed and just update for all p we update the pij and in the end i saw someone said that we should just take dp of nk uh, but actually we should just like we are allowed to remove at most k signs, we can remove less than that. So we should just actually print dp n1. No. Uh, no. dp and k. Like because we can remove any number of signs up to k. And this is basically just it, just written a bit using C. So all signs between p and i are being removed, yes. Like I am at sign i, I want to remove j signs before i. I loop over p, which is the previous not removed sign. Uh, today I am doing code words round 765, which happened today. Can I please write the recursive one? Probably not now, but I'll consider it later. 
Uh, can we do it greedily, storing the K largest and removing that? Like, probably not. I mean, I'm not sure how to explain. Like, yeah, there's just no greedy argument probably that allows you to do that. I think you can just like, construct a counter case against most critics pretty easily. And it will be small, but yeah, it's not easy, but yeah, I think this problem should not be solved by greedy. Do I think there is an n square log n? Uh, times solution with segment 3. Mm, I'm not sure about segment 3 because we have some di times ap right so this is depends on two like this is some linear function in di so i think it is solvable in n square log n and maybe maybe even in n square but probably not but i guess if you use some line container which like allows you to find minimum of uh okay yeah i had the bug here J signs are removed in one I minus one. Yes, thank you for noticing. Sorry about that. This should be I, of course. Yes. Convex how trick. Yeah, but your con mm. your functions are not like yeah, it's convex how trick, but AP are just arbitrary. Hmm. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you can you can do it in I think you can even do it in n square time. You can just have a stack. If you actually do dp from right to left, then n times k times log n with divide and conquer dp. Maybe that's too. Maybe that too. What is code forces? Code forces is this website, codeforces.com. Be sure to check it. It's pretty uh, like it's the main go-to site for any competitive programming contests as of now. Uh, can I explain what DPIJ stores again? I think it's written on the screen now. Like, if it's still, I am using an iPad for drawing. Minimum time to move up to sign i if sign i is not removed and j signs are removed in one, two. Yes, mark c as green, thank you. Removed before i. So once again, the inner loop, I loop over what was the previous sign that was removed, what was not removed, which is p. And like I can write it, I can write a formula here actually. So dpij uh, is equal to uh, minimum because we want to minimize time, or p from zero to okay i minus one uh, dp of p, which was the previous not removed sign. How many signs? J minus I minus P minus one, which should be the number of not removed signs before sign P, because we remove all the signs between I and P, uh, plus the time we need to move from P to I, which is just DI minus GP times AP, which is basically what is written in the code. Like I have not which this is just distance times speed. This is basically what is written here. So this is just a DP formula, which follows from the fact that we only need to know the previous not removed sign to know the speed on the whole segment. dpp and oj is time we need to get to sign p having removed like this number of 
sines j minus i minus p minus 1. Like this is time we need to move to sine p, right? Okay, I'll just draw here because I don't want to. Yeah, I guess I can do this. We have 0, we have i, we have p. And let's say that i is kept, p is kept, and we remove all the signs between them. So we know how much time we need to move from p to i. And here we just use dp. And here we just use distance times time. I added L in vector D just to make a, an extra sign at the end, which is not removed. This is just this is just convenient to fix that we have a sign at the end of the road which is not removed, so that the answer to the problem is always kept in DPN something. Okay, let's proceed, I think, to problem D. Spiders join in pairs. The first spider in pair has x legs, the second has y legs. We will have with durability x, x, or y. Um. <laughs> this is a bit interesting. Is it correct? Like, have I read the problem correct that we have uh, an array of integers and we have k? Yeah, 16, like spider is spooky. We have k, an integer k, we want to find a subset of our elements, uh, which has the largest possible size, so that the any two elements give at least k in their XOR. Because, right, we have just had a problem in could buy around like which was basically the same but we have less than or equal here right and now we just put greater than or equal here and this is basically this problem right and as Ildar said in comments this round he said this problem for his contest two years ago well I guess Um, well, it's not hard to remember a problem which happened less than a month ago. And Ilar told about his problem in the comments which I read, and not like I remember that problem. Okay, how do we solve it? We can actually, if I was in a competition, I would just probably open that problem and maybe even copy the code. Um, but I guess I won't. Let's see if I can solve it now. Um. I am from Belarus and I mostly live in Russia currently. That is an iPad. 
at least was. Okay, let's see. So we have some binary numbers. Okay, we have some k, which is a binary number. Okay, I don't know for now. Uh, we have some binary numbers. Um, So for example, let's say k is a power of 2. Um, yeah, k here. Let's say k is just 1, 0, 0, 0. And basically, uh, yeah, okay. First of all, let's say k is equal to just 1. k is equal to 1 just means that we want to take uh, elements that are all distinct, right? We want to take like we cannot take equal elements, but we can take any distinct elements. So we just take one occurrence of each element. Now let's say k is a power of two, like one zero 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 zero, for example. Okay. So uh, we can just, for example, if we have four zeros here, we can just remove the least significant four bits. And basically, we just need these parts to be all distinct. So we just take one occurrence of each number here. Because if we take two elements that have the same prefix, that only, only differ in the lowest four bits, their, like, their XOR is always less than 10000, just because that's how it works. Uh, and if the ele if two elements are distinct, like differ in bits higher than the four lowest bits, then for sure their XOR is at least, like for example, these two elements, their XOR is for sure at least 1000, right? So if the number is uh, just... power of 2, then it's easy. Now, what happens if it's not a power of 2? Uh, let's say it's something else. Okay. Not sure why I'm, why I'm erasing, but I guess why not. So once again, like we still need the bits in this part to be distinct, otherwise two numbers will not work. But now we are not even sure we can take any two numbers from here. Yeah. But you can only fail Yeah, like for example, if you have two numbers that have, okay, one number has 100 zero zero here and one number has 101, one. then for sure, like these two numbers can work or maybe they don't work, we don't know. And, but otherwise, no other pair will be too bad for us. So, hmm. we split all numbers into 
groups and we have some pairs of groups where like they could influence each other and now basically we have two groups we have one group of numbers and we have another group of numbers and we kind of beat them for example and we want to find whether we have ai xor bj which is greater than or equal than sum k prime for example if you can take can find such two numbers then we are good otherwise we are not and how do we do that Um, we can use a try. How how do you actually pronounce it? A try, I guess. It's not a tree, right? It should be a try. You can use a try, but probably you can also use something else. Can you? Hmm. Not sure. <laughs> three i yes okay let's let's implement this and then we'll see k is equal to zero, then we can just print everything. This is probably a special case. I will upload my stream, yes. And now, otherwise... We find how many bits we should kind of remove from each number, right? Yeah, I think so. And now... Hmm. Okay, since we need some indices, we can just sort the array this way okay, and now I want to take the next group of elements which has the same value not counting the last bits okay uh yeah i should not rem not forget to use order here uh Yeah. They are all equal. And now basically I want to take any element from this group, but we can have two neighboring groups. 
that uh, influence each other. Okay, let's see. If n plus 1 is smaller than m, and a order n plus 1 shifted by bits bits plus 1, for example, is equal to a order n shifted by bits plus 1, and then we should do something with this group. Otherwise, we just take this group, we take any element in this group. We can have an array result. Uh, we push order back the result, for example. Uh, yeah, we just pinned it here. Um, yeah, otherwise, okay, let's see what happens now. For the example, for ex at least, and then we'll, we'll see. Two, two, four. I guess. Yeah, and also we need to take at least two. Um, not continue, but return zero. Uh, yeah, so now we only need to solve this sub problem. Okay, whatever. Mm, we'll have end two, which is our second segment. Um, yeah, this is D from zero to one, from two to four. Okay. And now I can make a slow solution, but I want a fast solution already. So do I really use, need to use a try? Can I make it without it? I don't see it. Okay. Maybe not. Let's just make a try then. Um, okay, you can have array. Um, whatever, I guess. For each number in the first part, we want to put it into the try. We have okay thirty bits, so we just go in this order. Oh, actually, we have bits, bits, right? We only need the lowest bits. Yes. Um. Okay, current bit is a order i shift by j and 1. If this there is no such link, then let's make this link. And let's go. And 3 in place. That's kind of how I implement to try for some time. I think it's OK. Mm. And now we go from for like, the second segment y is equal to 1, it's equal to 0, it's the root, okay? And now, mm -hmm. if there is no link, okay, I want to move by a different link. Yeah, and also I need to save the index of a number. When I end, at some vertex, I need to save order i. OK. 
Okay. Org i xor a. Okay, i dx t should not be equal to minus one. Should not be equal to minus one. Mm. That's at least k. Then we are done. And we found an answer. If we have not found anything, then we just push back one element. It doesn't compile because it's not vector vector int, it's just vector, first of all. And second of all, we have to also do this. Two, three, four. That's the correct answer, I guess. Minus one. Okay, let's just submit and see what happens. Uh, I'm not really sure in my solution, but I guess I should be sure. All right. So the actual question is, do we actually need a try? in this problem or is there a solution without a try who can tell people accept it without try okay some people could we get ac with maps where do you need maps in this problem Without try, please. I, I, I wish I knew a solution without try. Solve it with recursion. Um, well. Okay, I guess recursion could work. Yeah, just sure. I'm solving a bit more general problem. Like for each number in one part, I find the best number in the second pair but i can just if i since i just need one pair i guess i can just use recursion and kind of i that, that will be kind of in, equivalent to this like i will have two two tries one for one part one for the other part and then i will kind of be moving in both tries like with two pointers so <sighs> Yeah, this problem is already a bit tough to explain in simple words. But I guess I already actually explained something, right? So once again, if k is just the power of 2, I want all bits by the low, but the lowest bits to be distinct, right? And if k is, for example, 1, 0, 1, 0, right? I have some numbers. Okay, let's, let's say again. k is equal to 1, 0, 1, 0. I have some numbers. One number is... 1, 0, okay, I actually sorted all the numbers, so let, let's kind of sort. So I can have number 0, 0, uh, 0, 0, 1, 1, I can have 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, I have 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. I don't know. For example, I can have 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, and so on, right? So like I said, uh, for example, I cannot take both these numbers. Like, this is the divide, dividing part. I cannot take numbers that have the same bits, the same high bits. Like, I have just divided numbers. Uh, I have split the right three bits in uh each number because k has three well it has four bits so i split three like and i have say high bits and i have low bits and i'm saying that i cannot take two numbers with the same high bits because they will not have a good xor I can only take at most one of, from these numbers. I can only take at most one from these numbers. I can only take at most one from this like group. I group the numbers by their high bits. 
And once again, if k is just a power of two, this is all the solution. Like I need to take at most one number in each group and I can take any number because numbers from different group groups will not interfere with each other. But if k is not a power of two, it might happen that I cannot take just any number from here and any number from here. For example, if I take 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1 from here, and if I take 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1 from here, uh, then their XOR is equal to 1, 0, 0, 0, which is less than K. So this is invalid. I cannot just take this pair. Uh, however, if I took a different number from here, for example, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, then, uh, okay, XOR of these two numbers would be equal to 1100, zero, zero, which is good enough. So if I have two groups which have the same high bits except for the lowest bit, which is different, then I can take one number from that group and one number from that group subject to a condition. Like these two numbers taken from one group and the other group should satisfy the condition of XOR. And now I have split all groups into pairs some groups may not have a pair. In this case, I can just take any number from that group. And in each pair of groups, I need to take one number from one group and one from the other group so that their XOR is as high as possible. And to solve this subproblem, I build the try. For example, I take the first group. I build the try only on the lowest bits, on the low bits, because I don't need the high bits. I have a root here. So I have 0, 1, 1 and 1, 1, 0. Okay, this is not an interesting try, but... Anyway, this is how it will look. I have 0, 1, 1 here and 1, 1, 0 here. And now, uh, yeah, like it's not too interesting on this try, but in general, the algorithm is now I take every number in the second group. Let's say I have a number 0, 1, 1 here. I want to find a number which is as different from this number as possible. I want to take the maximum XOR of this number with some number from the first group. So I just start in the root and just move down the try. And in each vertex, I try to move by a different bit from the one I have in this number. So for example, here uh, I have 0, 1, 1 uh, in this number. So since I have 0 here, I want to move by 1 if possible. I do have a 1 here, so I just move by 1. And then I have 1. I want to move by zero, but from this vertex, I cannot go by zero because there is no zero. So I just go by the only link I have in this vertex. And then again, I have a one here. So I just move by zero because I want to move by zero. And finally, I emerge at some vertex. This vertex corresponds to number one, one, zero. And their XOR is like actually maximum possible because in each vertex, I just move by a different bit is if that's possible. So that is, that is the algorithm. So for each number in the second group, I find the most different number from the first group. And if I find a good pair from one group and the other group, then I'm done. And then, yeah, that's basically what I did in the code. K is equal to zero is just special case. Uh, I find how many low bits I have. I sort all the numbers. Uh, yeah, like I commented here, from back to end inclusive is a number, is a group I have, one group. And then if the next group will only differ in the lowest high bit, then I will take the next group as well. I will form it. Now I have two groups from back to end and from back to, to end two. Uh, I take the first group and build a try based on it. And for each element in the second group, I go down the try. I have XOR1 here, which is important, like I want to move by a different bit from the current bit. And finally, I get to some vertex and I check if XOR is at least K, then this pair is good. Otherwise, I proceed. And if I have not found any good pair, I just take any one number from like the first group or, or the second group, doesn't matter here. Because I can have two, but I can have one always. And that's it. Okay. Maybe it's a bit tired for G, but a bit hard for G. Tired? Yeah, actually, I am a bit tired already. Uh, maybe I'm trying too hard to explain. 
but that's fine. Mm, I don't know, it's hard to say about if it's like just solve counting. I guess it's a bit hard for D, but it's okay. Basically, this contest was this round was based on a, an actual like Belarusian regional contest, right? So probably there was no space to change difficulty. Solution to H was no, it was different because like actually this condition is very different, even though it's just less than or equal instead of greater than or equal, it's actually a very different problem. So it's, yeah, this one is harder. Okay, let's read I, let's read E. Actually, let me take a small break. One minute or or two. Um, okay, I have only I'm back. So we have a problem about regular bracket sequences, which also allows period characters. Um, but we should just discard periods, right? I guess. Okay. Periods can appear in the hard version. So the problem is what? Okay. Find how many substrings are regular bracket sequences. What about the hard version? Uh, yeah, also this one, it's guaranteed that substring is a simple RPS. Uh, 
And now we also have some removal queries. Okay. This is some. Hmm. Do we need some data structures? Probably. Maybe not. Okay, I'll just hide the timer because it's not relevant. Okay, in general, if you have a right bracket sequence, how do we find the number of substrings that are regular bracket sequences? We can just find any Okay, I think I do have some idea. Let's see. Okay, just a moment. Good now. So, okay, let's say we have a string which is actually a correct bracket sequence. Now, I think, like, what could be the correct top strings in this case? For example, like, all the brackets are divided into pairs, right? We can al always draw it like this. Yeah, let's also have some. No, it's not beautiful. Okay, let's just fix it. Let's say we have more brackets here. So we have this, we have this, we have this, we have this, right? So uh, what correct substrings do we have? First, on the outer level, level, we can have substring like this, like this, like this. We can have a substring like this, we can have a substring like this, or we can have the whole string, right? So here we have six options um, and basically this is just given by the number of elements we have like we have three outer level pairs one pair second pair third pair 
And so we can take one, two, three, we can take one, two, two, three, or one, two, three, which is basically, since we have three, uh, we have three times four over two ways to choose some consecutive substrings, right? And what next? If we don't take any outer level level substrings, then we are just going into some inner level. So, for example, we can just have substring like this of two characters, right? This is just one way. Uh, here we don't have anything, so we cannot take anything. And here we have again we have three different substrings uh, inside uh, inside this pair. So we can have again one, two, three. We can have one, two. We can have two, three. We can have one, two, three. And then we can also have just this pair. So what I want to do is actually I want to represent this string as a tree, not a try this time, but just a tree. Um, the root will be like the whole string. The whole string will have three different outer level substrings. So one, two, three. This one has just one child, which is just this pair. This one has no children. And now this one has again three children. And the middle child has one more child. So I want to represent this bracket sequence as this tree. And I'm assuming this is what I actually want. And now given this tree, uh, I actually think that the answer to the problem is just sum of, uh, yeah, di times di plus 1 over 2 over all vertices i, where di is, well, number of children of i. And updating with dots, I think it's just removing a leaf in this tree, because what we are given in the problem, like we are only re removing a pair of characters, so that all characters between them are, are already removed. So I think removing a pair is exactly just removing a leaf in this tree. Uh, it's not a forest, I think. Uh, well, yeah, it is a forest because the initial string is not a like one string, but yeah, like the initial string is not a correct bracket sequence for sure, right? Right. I have to split the initial string into some correct substrings and then each such string will be a tree. But otherwise, like, yeah, for one string, it's just a tree. Um, yeah, and then I can just maintain this. I think it's easy after that. It should be even linear time, right? If, if all my assumptions are correct. So let's see. I guess I will just implement both versions. Well, I don't have to. I can only implement the second type of queries, submit, and then implement the, fir the first type as well. But in general, my solution should be... Yeah. Mm how to actually process a query. Hmm. Yeah, I have some substring, which is uh, a number of consecutive. Yeah. It's OK. It's OK. I think it's OK. Okay, let's just build this forest for sure. Um, initially, I'll just have one vertex, and I also want to have a stack. 
and for each position in the string I want to know which vertex it belongs to. Now I go by the characters and then if a character is an opening bracket uh, it's bad because I will have some unclosed brackets in the end and it's pretty sad. Like yeah, it's a bit annoying that the initial string is not a correct string. Yeah, I guess I, I will need some sub, some data structures. Yes, that's that's fine. Thirty-five minutes okay whatever so let's just find the pairs first for all brackets and then we'll just see where of i is equal to back pair of back is equal to i and pop back okay now i have found all pairs and now, how do I actually build my forest? Okay, let's just find all good substrings with a similar method to what I had in the previous problem. Uh, if this character is not relevant, just skip it. And now I have a substring which is a right bracket sequence. And I want to build a tree. How do I do that? Mm. No. Mm. How do I do that? I guess just a stack again. So I have a new root. Uh, yeah, let's use the same vector because who cares? And then we go by the characters and No, I think it should be easier. Okay, let's think again. It should not be hard. Like, I don't even need the, to build the tree explicitly. I can use this string as a tree, like, maintainer, right? And basically, I only need... For each, like, yeah, like, like here, I said that I want to maintain this value, so I can just have degree of each vertex maintained in some position, I guess. And this will basically be it. Yeah, I think it's fine. Yeah, I don't need, like, I can use string positions as brackets, like as vertices, kind of. Okay, so I'll have a, like, graph anyway. Um, yep. 
Okay, let's have an extra vertex, which is like a fake vertex. And for each bracket, I will also save its index. It's a bit annoying. Okay. Like, I am trying to solve the second sub problem, but yeah, how, how to actually implement it reasonably? Okay, I guess Okay. Let's do this. So I will have a new vertex for each thing. Now for each thing from back to end. Okay, if uh, this character is open bracket, then just well, pop back from here. And here I should just push. Well, it should not be empty. Anytime. Um, do I want to save parent? Yes. Okay. And push back and push back what? I, I think. And pop back. Okay. Yeah, this could be. Okay. Now. Um. I mean, type in. Come on. For each bracket, I need to, yes, maintain something. Right, right. Okay. I guess I will have to use Fenwick tree in any case. Um, what size N? For each reasonable, okay, for each relevant opening bracket, I want to save some value. Okay, and okay, degree of i is equal to gi size, and uh, value i is equal to over 2 and in position i i add well i i think this is it and now let's answer queries um 
we won't consider removing for now. We will only consider queries. So yeah, we can save this. And now we save the result like we find the total um, index of r minus l plus one okay this could be right for the second like for the easy version three four one six okay let's submit What's going on? Okay. Accepted. And now how to handle the okay. So I have removals now. What does it change for me? Um Yeah, first of all, I have to remove some pair. So what I want to do is if parent of L is an actual bracket. Okay. And then I want to decrease it strictly by one. I need one long here because because new well minus well x x is equal to new well right but that's not all even though it works on the example but it's I think it should not work on a case like six two one two three okay three Query from one to six, we should get um, four, six here, right? Now let's say we remove three, four, and now we query again, we should get three, but I will get six. And the reason is that here I take index from L to R uh, and Okay, whatever. Uh, I should have another thing uh, like this. Like I want to have extra pandemic trees. Okay, let's just initialize like this. Uh, GFI. Okay. Uh, let's do this. Then here, GFX modify index x minus one. And here I want GF still this GFX get R index r minus gfx index l minus one i think something like this okay apparently something's wrong i don't actually like yeah i have to figure out why my why my thing is not working but I mean why don't I get any error messages not really sure
Okay, three. What's wrong with that? Okay, not IDXX, IDXL. Okay, six three is correct. Okay. Submit. Okay. Good enough. 11th place. I think that's that's decent, decent. Yeah, maybe someone will even in between, but it's fine. It's fine. Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year six times. So yeah, I will not go into too much detail on this problem because it's already pretty hard. Uh, there was a question about... I saw something. Do I even need the graph at all? I don't. I think I don't. Uh, instead of vector vector int, I can just use vector int, which is like the number of elements. I don't need the links themselves. So this will be this. And this will be plus equal to one. And this will be just gi, I think. And if gi is positive, and degree is equal to, again, just gi. So basically, I can call it degree straight away right and deck size right deck place back um back zero i guess is Okay, deck, deck. I don't need G. Don't ask me about G anymore. Okay, let's just submit this version too. It doesn't make too much difference though. But yeah, uh, why is it so much slower? <laughs> Wait, what? Why is it so much slower? Hmm. What happened, guys? I don't get it at all. <laughs> I'm using less memory. But why is it much slower? Interesting. Try submitting again. I don't think Code Force C has this problem. Does it? Hmm. Interesting. What about plus 20? Okay, same. What about the old solution? If I use C plus plus 20, Wait, but I actually like don't understand. Like I didn't do anything too bad. Isn't this just optimiz optimization? Why can it become that slow? Hmm. 
Yeah, I don't get it at all. <laughs> okay, I guess I'll have to figure it out later. But, yeah, talking about the problem, I don't know for now if I do have to use a vector of Fenwick trees. Like, I have a lot of them. When instead I like I have one fanfic tree which allows for range queries, which cut like sums up all the answers for all substrings, and then I have a vector of fanfic trees or binary index trees, if you like that name more, which allows me to count substrings on the same level, on the outer level. Like I have a string, I want to know how many different uh, strings are still there. So I have an another value, like another tree. Yeah, the total size is linear because each string only appears in fanfic tree of its parent. So since, yeah, that's why the total size is linear. Is there any any other way? I guess we can just take a look at the comments. Solve E1 with small, but it's hard to solve it. It's hard to solve E2 with small, right? All right. Uh, that's probably it for today. Yeah, actually, this is a little bit tiring. I don't know. It's fine. Like, maybe I should just chill more. But it definitely took me more energy than it would if I... But it's fine. It's fine. Uh, anyway, I don't think I will have any streams tomorrow. Or, yeah, I think the next stream will be on 16th because we seem to not have any contests on code forces until 16th and also there is a snark news series round ending on 16th so i think that i should just yeah maybe i will solve both on stream uh maybe not maybe just snark news series and maybe then education round the day after or even not we'll see so the next stream is very likely to be on the 16th unless any new contests emerge so thanks a lot to everyone watching this i hope you found something new in this stream and maybe learned something about the problems or the way you can approach them or problems in general i yes i think i will upload it to youtube you can check it out later but you can also watch the videos on twitch as well if you open my profile on twitch you can also watch old streams right now they will disappear after two weeks i think but for the next two weeks you can watch them on twitch well as well so thanks a lot again and yeah be sure to follow if you haven't yet uh, to get notifications about future streams. Thank you and goodbye.